Hello everyone, welcome to a Maya to Unity tutorial series. Um, today we have our construction worker, which has been part of a lot of our tutorials and our playlists lately. Um, we already have animation built into this guy. Um, I'll turn on my x-ray joint so you can see. Let's turn on all joints actually. There you go. Okay, so we have animation already built in. Now there's some stuff, sometimes some of the stuff will carry over, but the problem is that since our joints are being controlled by controllers, sometimes this animation information from the controllers that's making the joints move isn't actually passed to Unity in all cases. Sometimes you'll run, run into a situation where Maya will figure out what you're trying to do and it'll bake the animation in before it exports it. But I've seen a lot of cases where it isn't done by default. So we're gonna go through all the processes to make sure that it's ironclad as it goes over to Unity. So <clears throat> to ensure that your animation is actually baked into your joints, because if you click on these joints, you can see there's no actual keyframes here. So once it gets over to Unity, it really don't, won't necessarily know what to do because the controls don't come to Unity. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to change our modeling tab here to animation. And we're going to select our root joint here. And we're gonna go to key and we're going to go to, actually before we even go there, let's go to select hierarchy. That makes it to where not only is the root joint selected, but all the joints in the actual skeleton is selected as well. So then we're gonna go to key and we're going to go to, uh, let's see here, bake simulation. And if you want to, we could also open up the submenu on this um, if you're wanting to bake specific sections of it. Um, but in this case, I wanna bake the entire animation. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on bake. Okay, so it'll go through. It's going to bake all the animation. It's going to bake it down to the joints, and it'll create a bunch of keyframes for each joint to be able to push forward that animation data. Okay, so there we go. So now each joint now has animation data baked into it. So now my or you will know what to do with our model once it goes over there. Okay, so now we can go and select our joint rig here. And let's turn off reference so I can select the model as well. And I'll shift select the model and I'll go to file, export selection. Now I've already preset the pathway to where, well actually I guess I didn't. As I said, I've already preset the pathway to my Unity project, but apparently when I reopened it didn't take. So let's go ahead and just redo it from scratch anyways. Um, so we'll go to my computer and I'll just locate where I have my Unity projects saved at. Okay, put them in the assets folder underneath models and I'm just going to put them inside of this one here and I'll call this one the dude. Okay, let my go ahead and export that and then I'll jump over to Unity. I already have Unity open. Let's go ahead and pop over to Unity for a second here. Mm, might be sticking out, there we go. Okay, so there's the dude inside of Unity. Okay, so let's just Make sure uh, before we go and do anything that this actually worked right. So we'll press play down here. And I can see there's already some animation. That's what we wanted. Perfect. Okay. So let me get some space going on here. I want to be able to work and not be confined down to this one corner. So what you're going to want to do to be able to set this up so that your animator will be able to use your model inside your scene is you want to be able to have these clips already cut up for them. So what we're going to do is say, okay, so from, if I scrub, I can see my frame counter down here at the bottom here, it says frame nine. Um, my walk cycle ends on frame 30. Now, if I had my, um, my uh, animation list, which I had, I can probably open it while I'm doing this, um, it'll tell me exactly where all my animation cuts are, but let's say you don't have it on hand. You can go through and just scrub right here and figure out where the start and end frames are. So I can say, okay, we're gonna end this on frame 30. And so from frame one to frame 30 is my animation. I'm gonna say, okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to call this one uh, dude. That way I know that this animation is for this one guy, otherwise you'll have a bunch of them saying walk cycle, and we don't want this to be specific for this guy. So I do walk. Okay, and if you have more than one walk cycle, you can do walk part one, part two, part three, etc. Um, 
Okay, and we'll go ahead and hit apply. Now don't worry about hitting any of these things in here. These are all good for now. Okay, it's creating its cycle. And actually this clip is stored inside the model. Unity does this and I think it's kind of weird because I prefer to organize my clips in an area that I would like them to be at. But you can see down here that they actually now have a dude block clip. And we'll get into what we're going to do with those here in a little bit once I have these all cut up. Okay, moving on. We're going to now do, uh, let's go on and create another clip. So we're going to click this little plus sign here and I'll call this one run. Okay, so now we're going to move to where he's going to run. So right in here, frame 40 to 60. Okay, so I'll put 40 and 60 here. And we want to make sure it's called right, so we're going to call it dude run. Okay. Perfect. Come back down to here, hit apply. There we go. Now we have our second clip. Let's go ahead and keep going. Um, click plus again. So next one is our idle cycle. And he idles from frame 70 uh, Let's open this timeline up the rest of the way. Um, from 70 to 207. So 70 to 207 is going to be our dude idle. Hit apply again. There we go. Didn't update right away. Now we're going to add another clip. This one will be. Oh, got to open our timeline up a little bit more. So from, let's see here. 210 to 230 is take damage, so 210 to 230 is take damage. Okay, we'll apply that one. Add another one in here. And this one will be called Dude Killed. And this will be from Right there to right there, and we'll hit apply. Okay, let's create another one. And let's go ahead and bring this down to the end here. So we got a kick attack. Say, dude, come on, dude, kick. Let's go ahead and add another one here. This will be dude. Punch. Okay, it's our last one. 
There we go. All right, so now we have our animation clips set up. Now we just need to put them together in what's called an animation controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add, uh, usually we have uh, another folder here for controllers, but for the purpose of this lesson, I'm just gonna put it in here with my model so it's easier for me to get to. So let's go to create animation controller. I'm gonna call this one AC for animation controller, the dude. Okay, so I can double click on this guy. All right, and my entry is going to be the idle. So I go to create from right mouse button clicking this area, go to create. And let's say, let's go create. Let's go create empty for now. So we've got new state here. We're gonna go ahead and call this one uh, dude idle. And then we're gonna go to where the motion is. This is where we get to pick our clip. We'll say, okay, we're going to pick dude idle. Okay, so that's good. Now when it comes to how to control our animation controller here, um, that's gonna be help be taken care of programmatically. So a lot of the stuff we're gonna have to deal with a programmer and I might have a separate lesson later on to show you guys how we can create a test uh, script that we can use in conjunction with our programmers so that we can have conditions that says what will happen when and what the exit conditions are and all that but for this one we're just going to keep it bare bones on how to create this in a way that our programmer can take it out of our hands and use it so we have our first state here which is the dude um, now we're going to want to go ahead and add in some, some additional states so we're going to create a new state another empty one and then we're going to say this one is going to be my uh, my walk cycle okay and I'll call this one walk and I'm going to create a connection from this state to this state so I'll right mouse button click here and do make transition and then I'm going to bring it over here oops make transition there we go so now when I click on this transition arrow, then I can see what the blend will look like. So here's the idle cycle, here's the walk cycle. So if I press play, oh, maybe the dude's idle is messed up. Okay, might have, uh, let's check here. Oh yeah, that's not the idle. Let's go ahead and update this really quick. So we'll update over here. Okay, so that's the idle right there. Okay, hit apply, and that should update over here as well. There's his idle, and then he goes into walk. Perfect. Okay. Now we want to go walk to idle. So that because if he goes this way, we want to be able to blend back the other way. So I then right mouse button click on this side, make transition, and go this way. So you have to think about whether these transitions make sense. You don't always want them to be able to go back to another one. So like for instance, you want, wouldn't want the run to go straight to an idle. You want to transition down to a walk and then to idle. So be a little smart about your transitions. Not everything goes back. Okay. So that was okay. Um, problem that you probably did notice was that we have a slide going on back here. We're going to probably deal with that in another lesson. We're just not going to have time to deal with corrections on root motion, but that's a, a root motion issue, which I'll address in a later lesson. Okay, so let's go ahead and put walk right here. We're going to go ahead and go to create state empty. This one's going to be our walk. Or not our walk, our run, sorry. Let's go ahead and pick our run cycle. Okay, and then we'll make a transition. So can you go from idle to run? Probably not, you probably should go to from walk to run first. Um, but we can make it just as a test to see if it looks okay. Let's see if that looks all right. So he starts out in an idle, and then he just takes off into running, which it looks like it might be believable. Let's go ahead and just create the blend a little bit more though, so that way it isn't just straight into 
a run. There we go. I think that might work. Let's also make it to where there's a case where we can go to walk as well. So we're going to go to make transition from walk to run. So let's see how that looks. So there's our walk cycle, and then it takes off in a run cycle. Um, probably need to blend this a little bit more. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Um, you can always spend time blending these down. Um, we're also, like I said, we're going to deal with the root mesh in, in the next lesson. So you can see how he's getting ready to take off right in there. But he's not just going straight at it, right? Okay, let's keep going. We're going to go back the other way as well. How would you go from run back to walk? Okay, oops, make transition. There we go, let's see how that looks. Well, the transition in body looks okay, but obviously you have to look past the root motion issue. Okay, so let's just say that's fine for now. Um, let's go ahead and get the rest of the states in here. So we have our attack, right? So we're gonna go to create state, empty. This one's gonna be called our kick. So we'll call this one kick. And can you go from a run to a kick? Probably not. You can probably go from a walk to a kick though. So let's do walk to kick. Let's see what run to kick looks like. Okay, well, I think it's believable, it could work. Um, but this also kind of creates an issue that I wanted to address earlier on was that we can actually do something called a substate. That way we don't end up having like these webs going crisscrossing each other so much. So if I want to delete these two, delete this one, and then create what's called a substate. So basically creates a nested state machine. So we're going to create substate machine. Okay. So if I double click this one, it creates basically a new state that will make it to where anything we plug into this will then go down to its, its substates. So we can say, okay, we're going to create our our kick and we can also go create our punch So I can go to either one of these. Mm, let's just get rid of this one. Let's say you can go from kick. Actually, let's get rid of this one. Yeah, either one of these will be okay. Let me go backwards. There we go. So you can go both ways. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so let's go back to exit. Actually, let's go. Okay. So actually, let's can this. We'll go back up here states and this can go from kick back to idle back to walk and back to run so that will send it send it back for us and then we can also do the same thing here we can go to idle walk and run. All right, so we can go ahead and exit out of here. We have our substate machine set up.
All right. These are all good. Let's also set it up to where our run goes in. Can connect to the kick. Can also connect to the punch. So that creates the entry for us if we wanted to go that way. And if we go do the same thing going this way, kick. And punch. Okay. And may as well do it for all of them. There we go. All right, so those three all connected up. Now, if we wanted to, we can even create another substate machine for the take damage. So let's just go ahead and do that. Create substate machine, and this one will be called actually name it. This one is damaged. Let's call this one over here attack. Okay. Go back to damaged here. Right mouse button click in here. Create another empty. This one is going to be our take damage. Damage. And then we'll create another one. And this one's going to be dead. Yeah. So you can go from damage to, to being killed. But you can't go from being killed back to damaged, right? So I can't go that way. Um, we can go from being damaged back to idle. And we can go from being damaged back to... say walk and we can say that you can also go back from being damaged to run so just leaving those conditions open if we want to and then let's go back up here and how can these ones go in here so obviously the other way so make transition we can go back to damage and you go from uh, to damage and you can also go to being killed and same thing for this one oops to damaged and dead okay and then we can go to idle as well damaged and dead okay so there we go so now we have a much simpler setup state machine. I know this still looks a little, like a little bit chaotic because there's a lot of arrows going different directions, but there could be four of these instead of just two. And when you have a lot of attacks going on, let's say you have eight or nine attacks, having this web is really difficult to deal with. And then you have your damage sets as well. You can end up with like 18 of these things easy. Um, so you could also have a bunch of different runs. You could have a bunch of different idles. Having it to where they're set up in sets with these substate machines really does help. So we're a little over 20 minutes now, so I'm going to break off this lesson. Um, in the next lesson, we'll go into how to deal with those uh, root motion issues and uh, getting our state machine dialed up. Um, so thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.